I rise uh, today to speak once again to the closure of the Maritime uh, Subcenter in St. John's and, of course, the, uh, the center as well in Quebec City. Uh, my concern, of course, at this point in time is that we cannot seem to get across to the Government of Canada how important that subcenter is uh, to the lives of people who spend much of their time at sea, whether uh, we're talking about uh, sailors or fishers or people who just use the sea um, as pleasure or oil workers, for instance. What we have in Newfoundland and Labrador is a very risk environment. It's a risk environment for anyone who goes to sea. And we've been trying to tell the minister responsible for fisheries and oceans and the prime minister and anyone else who will listen that to continue down the path of closing that subcenter is going to mean much more harm to people. Uh, we've said time and time again that you need, really need to know Newfoundland and Labrador. You really need to know uh, the island portion of our province in particular and be familiar with uh, all of that part of our country in order to do uh, justice to be able to uh, serve the needs of people who use the sea for traveling for whatever purpose. I know that many fishers, many oil uh, workers who go to sea to earn a living uh, cannot even imagine not being able to access a safety center that is within their own um, area, so that is within St. John's. And Remember that the people who work there, the 12 people who work in that center, have worked there for quite some time and know only too well uh, all of the area around Newfoundland and Labrador. They're able to identify the minute someone calls in uh, an SOS or the minute someone says we're in danger, all they have to do is say where and the 12 individuals who work in that center know exactly where they are, know exactly how to reach them and know the best thing to do. And Mr. Speaker, just to give you an example, uh, a call came in on Saturday, this past Saturday. Three fishermen were stranded on a rock ledge in Labrador. Their small boat swallowed by rough seas. And, uh, they were, and they didn't have to spend time, the people that were in the center didn't have to spend time looking at nautical charts because they knew exactly when the call came in where these people were stranded and knew exactly what to do. Another example of what's happened at sea that I would think would make the government think twice about its decision is the crash of the uh, Cougar helicopter where we lost 17 lives. And there was a, a, an inquiry, the Wells Inquiry, in fact, that was undertaken at that time. And one of the recommendations of the Wells Inquiry was, in fact, to enhance safety, not diminish it. So here we are, after all of that has taken place, now we see safety being diminished, in fact, because once you move the responsibility for safety from that center to Halifax or to Nova Scotia or to uh, Trenton in Ontario, then you're going to end up with people who are less knowledgeable about the area, less knowledgeable about the risky environment in which people work from day to day. And that's a serious issue for those of us who are familiar with the center itself and with the 12 individuals who work there. So apart from the safety aspect, which is crucial, we're also talking about the loss of jobs. We're talking about the loss of very capable individuals who can do the best service that needs to be done in protecting those who spend their time at sea. And uh, I have to uh, respond with, with disbelief with some of the commentary just made by my honorable colleague. I mean, to suggest that this is a way of saving dollars, of becoming much more efficient. This is about safety. If you want to save dollars, look at the cabinet. Look at the, how, the size of the cabinets that, that in fact it has increased. And you know with, with an increase in the size of cabinet means an increase in the expenditure. So if you want to save money, don't, for heaven's sake, don't look at safety issues. It's the same issue that you wanted to do with the lighthouses when you wanted to de-staff the lighthouses. The government said they were going to automate lighthouses, going to get rid of people that were there. Well, guess what? It was the wrong decision, and the government, in its wisdom, after some outcry and some representation on behalf of those who travel on the sea, made the point that you can't do that because it's not the same as having a set of eyes and having a human there versus having an automated lighthouse. So I'm going to ask the government once again to reconsider this decision just the way they did with the manned lighthouses.